Last time we derived two formulas from the Bohr model, which have stood the test of time and are extremely useful. The, here's the nucleus, here's the electron, it's distance r from the nucleus, and r equals a0 n squared over z, where n is the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number is how many wavelengths, how many lambda in one full circle. And z is the atomic number. That formula is incredibly good. Another formula that stood the test of time is the energy of the electron. Electrons are always negative in atoms, minus Rh, Z squared over N squared, the same two variables. So these are great equations, but there is a huge problem in the Bohr model. And the, uh, it can be seen right here. Let's look at the, uh, the various waves. So what I'm going to do is draw a circle. This is n equals 1. I'll draw another circle, n equals 2. And finally, a third circle, bigger, where n equals 3. And this is all following the equation that r equals a0 n squared over z. So as n increases, so does r. And remember, n is the number of full waves. So the n equals 1 state is this one full wave. It goes positive, negative, and positive. n equals 2 is two full waves. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And n equals 3 is three full waves. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And these are the Bohr model waves. And any chemist who sees those waves will realize they, they look nothing like what electron waves really look like. The problem with these waves is they are all one-dimensional. They are the values of the wave as I go in the one-dimensional circle. And we live in three dimensions. Our waves, our real waves, are three-dimensional. And to help us see what three-dimensional waves look like, I have this YouTube clip, which uh, I'm going to play here uh, for us. Okay, turn off the sound. What you see in this YouTube clip, oh, it's gotten big. What you see in this YouTube clip is the, the blue thing is a rubber dam, just the dentist used when they uh, isolate a tooth to do surgery on it, like in a root canal. The thing that looks like a tire on the right is a speaker. It's going to emit a frequency and it's going to set up a two-dimensional wave motion, real two-dimensional wave motion on the circle a circle is good because a circle is a good representation for a sphere, and atoms are spheres. So this is a 2D wave. And so here will be our first one, and let's see what the pattern we actually see is. And you can see the pattern you're seeing is that it goes up and down. So let me draw what that looks like over here. It's going up and down, so uh, solid lines will be uh, where it's positive, and then in time it goes negative, dotted lines will be negative. That's one frequency. Then let's look at another frequency.
here. Uh, so it's still, oh, here's a new frequency at 158. And you can see it goes up on one side, down on the other side, up on one side, down on the other side. I'm going to stop that and show you what that one looks like. It is uh, positive on one side and negative on the other side. And then in time, it switches. It's negative on one side and it's positive on one side. Okay, let's see another one. There. What's the pattern we see here? It is positive in two places and negative in two places. I'm going to stop that and I'll draw what we're seeing and then you can go back and witness. It's positive in two places and negative in two places. And then it switches the other way around. Negative in two places and positive in two places. These are what real waves look like. And let's, because that pattern is more complicated, I'll play it again. It's the 217 frequency pattern. You see it's getting positive in two places and negative in two places. And there's going to be one more we're going to look at, uh, which has got to become, there it is. What are we seeing here? Figure out what the pattern we're seeing here is. And I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to draw what the pattern we're seeing here is. It is positive in the center and then in the circle it gets negative. So it's positive here. And then around it it's negative. And then in time it oscillates to be negative in the center and positive. And these are the first four real, true 2D waves. And 2D waves look a lot like 3D waves. And you can see that these real waves look nothing like the pictures we had before from the Bohr model. These are what real 2D and 3D things look like. And they're so important that we have names for them. And uh, this is called, uh, here I'll give you the names, 1S. This one here is called 2P. This one is called 3D. And this one is called 2S. And we'll be talking about these four waves uh, throughout today's lecture.